Hello brothers and sisters, are you praying for Haiti? Ha Haiti. It's Haiti. Oh, not Haiti. Uh, they say in Spanish. Oh. Haiti. Are you praying for Haiti? You know what has been happening is painful and our brothers and sisters in Haiti are really, really, really suffering. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are not into, in Africa, are not into talking about this, but do you know that the UN Security Council has approved Kenya sending troops to Haiti just yesterday? Yeah. And this has been waiting because uh, a lot of people are saying that Kenya is now a puppet for the US going to represent Haiti. But where did all this start? There's a video that we just pulled on this channel where we say cry for Haiti. Mm -hmm. Then there's this letter that we want to show you where the people of Haiti, the civil, organi the civil, civil organizations mm -hmm. sent to the AU begging them to stop Kenya from, from sending, yeah. sending police from intervening because they are saying in this letter they are saying that Kenya is intervening on behalf of the US of the US which came into a country in 1915 mm -hmm. messed up for 19 years mm -hmm. up to 1934 came back in 1994 mm -hmm. messed up came back in 2004 messed Continue. us up so Haiti what Haiti needs is for Haitians to sit down and talk about this mm -hmm. without outside interference. So, we are leaving this letter so that you can listen to or read the letter. Yeah. Then comment, what do you think about Haiti? Should the international community engage or intervene? Or mm -hmm. should we yeah. just leave them yeah. and uh, look for a way to to send intermediaries, not police, intermediaries. Because Kenya this said 1,000, yeah? 1,000 police officers mm -hmm. they will be sending. Yeah? Mm -hmm. we, we need to look, as AU, we need to look uh, for intermediaries mm -hmm. to go and bring these gangs together. Because these gangs are people. Yeah. Then sit them down mm -hmm. and find a way. Because IT is our big brother. Listen to this letter. It's very interesting. And we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Open letter to the broader countries of Africa, the land of our ancestors, particularly the countries of the African Union, AU. None of the countries of the land of our ancestors, Africa, should serve as a sounding board or armed arm of the former colonial, slave-owning powers, transformed into imperialist powers and today actively engaged in a criminal project of destabilization of Haiti, systematic sabotage of its sovereignty of which the American UN occupation constitutes a dangerous step. Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries. We, the signatory Haitian organizations and personalities, have learned with amazement the surprising news that a brother country like Kenya has agreed to lead against Haiti and American UN occupation force disguised under the label of multinational force to better deceive Haiti. National and international public opinion thus trying to hide the Machiavellian side of this initiative. It should be noted that to prepare national and international public opinion for the acceptance of this betrayal, the power in place, and armed gangs are mobilized on a national scale with the objective of creating total chaos capable of justifying the American UN occupation of our country. Thus, armed gangs are authorized to collectively rape girls and women, to massacre, and to kidnap. Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries. We would like to draw to your attention the involvement of the United States of America in the process of supplying arms and ammunition to the gangs who are peacefully sowing terror and death in Haiti. According to a report from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, ANOC, published in March 2023, the weapons and munitions used by the gangs come in particular from the United States of America. The UNODC, in this same report, confirmed an increase in illegal arms trafficking, mainly from the United States to Haiti, from the state of Florida. How can we understand or hope that the USA, having such a heavy responsibility in delivering weapons and munitions to the gangs, can at the same time claim to help effectively fight them through a so-called multinational force? Paradoxically, 
What interest would the USA suddenly have in pursuing them? Surprisingly, despite this contradictory situation, the government of Kenya, in a press release from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, announced that it would be ready to provide leadership of a multinational force and to deploy in Haiti a contingent of 1,000 so-called police officers, intended to help train the Haitian police to restore normality in Haiti. It is only waiting for a mandate from the UN Security Council as well as the agreement of local authorities to begin its deployment operation. In his haste, he even planned in the coming weeks, according to Agents France Press, an assessment mission led by a Kenya police operational team. What operationality is this? What knowledge of the reality on the ground would such a team have to carry out the assessment of a situation that it only perceives through biased reports written by complicit agents of the core group? It should be noted that Kenya hastily agreed to get involved in this suspicious political adventure after Canada and other countries under pressure from a number of informed citizens had to reject the request of the USA to assume leadership of this occupying force that Unsecretary General Antonio Guterres and the U.S. government intend to impose by all means. Has the Kenyan government asked itself why Canada and other countries have, in fact, refused, despite pressure or advantages offered, to engage in this dubious enterprise? Did he question the real objectives of such an enterprise? Did it take the necessary time, like other countries already contacted in this regard, to reflect on the political significance and disastrous consequences of such a completely suspect adventure? At a time when several African countries are beginning to free themselves from the influence of the West or to move away from the logic of the West's harmful neocolonial practices, can Kenya afford, for the most part, misfortune of Haiti to contribute to the reinforcement of such pernicious and destabilizing practices? Has the government of Kenya sought to understand um, uh, acknowledged and unspeakable objectives of such a maneuver, which goes against what is solemnly proclaimed in the Constitutive Act and the Charter of the African Union? Indeed, it is mentioned in article, I, I, the charter, the objectives of the organization are as follows. Strengthen the unity and solidarity of African states. B, coordinate and intensify their cooperation and efforts to offer better living conditions to the people of Africa. Defend their sovereignty, territorial integrity, inner and independence. Eliminate in all its forms colonialism from Africa. Promote international cooperation, taking due account of the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article I, I, I states, member states to achieve the objectives set forth in Article yeah. I so only affirm the following principles. Sovereign equality of all member states, non-interference in the internal affairs of states, respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of each state and its inalienable right to independent existence. Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries, you will agree with us that the approach of the leaders of Kenya is part of a logic totally opposed to what is proclaimed in the AU Charter and that it is appropriate in this situation to invite it in the name of these officially adopted cardinal principles, to urgently review this approach which seriously undermines the sovereignty of Haiti, its right to self-determination. It is your duty to find the most effective strategy to explain to the leaders of this broader country that such a choice is likely to encourage, to reinforce in Haiti the already unacceptable interference of imperialist powers including the United States of America. Assuming for the benefit of the USA, the leadership of this occupying force simply amounts to helping them consolidate their genocidal control over this country. Ours, which carried out the first and only successful slave revolt in the entire history of humanity, and which at the same time changed the world order, colonial, racist, and slavery. This revolution represented a great hope for the black world and all the oppressed peoples of the planet in search of freedom and collective well-being. Um, Christian Tabira, highlighted what Haiti represents for the world and black people in particular in these terms. It is not through me alone that the people of ATI I opened the avenues to a world of justice and fraternity. It was also the black world as a whole, which recognized the first independent black republic torn away and then codified by former slaves built in the morgue of the colonial empire. It was also a gift for the oppressed world in its quest for reference and model in a universe that was not only hostile, but which as France Fanon asserted, was already seizing its past to disfigure it, distort it. This terrible multi-dimensional crisis that Haiti is going through is therefore cynically manufactured and maintained in large part by the former slave owning and racist colonial powers currently transformed into imperialist powers. The latter are in the process of suffocating 
Our country, with the effective assistance of local collaborators made up of puppet, corrupt, criminal, mafia political leaders imposed by Washington and that of equally corrupt oligarchs, criminals who finance armed gangs. All this is part of a global war of these former racist colonial powers against Haiti because it had dared to break the chains of slavery and thus create the conditions for the establishment of a new order, anti-slavery, anti-colonial, anti-racist world. Today, it is a question of these enslaving powers destabilizing our country, of erasing the Haitian people like the first inhabitants of this land, the Taino people decimated by the Spanish colonists and of building a Haiti without them. Haitians, from this perspective, they are fueling the chaos built to try to justify and legitimize their project of military occupation for the purposes of much more systematic political control and the total plunder of our wealth. Under these conditions, how can we believe that the USA would have the will to help the Haitian people eliminate armed gangs when it is a strategy of annihilating the resistance of the popular movement? Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries, we urge you to look into the revolting situation of our country in order to understand it well to better help us overcome it and above all to convince Kenya of the need not to let itself be drawn into the murderous logic of the imperialist powers which are persisting to bury. The sovereignty of Haiti, brother countries of the Africa of our ancestors, it is imperative to act in such a way as to prevent any country on the African continent from playing the role of a sounding board for the former colonial slave owning and imperialist powers and let Africa's active solidarity with Haiti be the preferred watchword from now on. As Professor Andre Anto pointed out, Africa embodies the sociological stock of Haiti. Haiti symbolizes the struggle for the liberation of the black colonized and enslaved by imperialist nations. In the name of this solid bond, in the name of what Haiti symbolizes in, in the name of Pan-Africanism, solidarity movement for the emancipation of black peoples through the world, which thus carries a political vision of emancipation of both Africa and its diaspora, Kenya must not um, choose imperialist servitude rather than Pan-African. Solidarity is as noted by the Black Alliance for Peace. It is important to remember that HI has a long tradition of solidarity with the peoples in struggle, including those of Latin America, Greece, and Africa. It is in this logic that Haitian President Nord, Alexis entrusted Benito Sylvain, considered one of the first apostles of Pan-Africanism with the task of providing effective support from Haiti to Ethiopia threatened by Italy. President Alexis helped King Man, like I, I buy cannons from Russia to defeat the Italian army in the Battle of Adua in Ethiopia. President Nord, Alexis insisted, we must help Emperor Menelik in a completely disinterested manner to maintain the national independence of his empire and to assure him in the fullness of his sovereign rights, a normal path of progress. If Ethiopia falls, we will be the only ones to fight against colonialism, but if it resists, our example will go long way and free Africa from the colonial yoke. Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries. Here is an example of concrete solidarity that we invite you to follow and practice to help Haiti recover it, its hypothecated sovereignty and perpetuate the simple freedom and dignity of the black people that it has always been. The Haitian people wish to find you at their side and thank you in advance for your concrete solidarity to help them get out of this dangerous impasse to circumvent the imminent landing of this warlike and murderous occupation project. Such solidarity will allow Haiti not only to resolutely reject the deployment of foreign occupying troops and to obtain as a result, mm, the recovery of its national sovereignty to put an end to the interference of imperialist powers, mm, the end of the indecent support of the destabilizing fringe of the international, in particular the USA, Canada, and France to the, the criminal five CAG government of Ariel Henry and the establishment of a credible transitional government. Mm. The effective application of Resolution 2653-2022 adopted by the Security Council on October 21, 2022, prohibiting arms trafficking from unmember states to Haiti. Mm. The suspension by the United States of the supply of weapons and ammunition to the gangs as well as the rapid recovery of weapons already introduced. Mm. The establishment of an independent commission of inquiry responsible for evaluating the 18 years of support of the UN in order to update its responsibilities in the current chaotic situation. Mm. The granting on behalf of Haiti from the un of another decade for Afro-descendants 2024-2033. Note that Haiti, the first to break the chains of slavery, was relegated to last place as part of the 
celebration of this international decade for people of African descent when the UN should have granted it a place of an honor. Honorable heads of state and government of brotherly African countries, we the signatory organizations and personalities want to end by reminding you of the urgent need to provide us with your concrete solidarity in this situation of extreme threat. We want to maintain the firm conviction that you will not fail to take an open position against the criminal project of occupation of Haiti and particularly against the regrettable decision of Kenya to persist in getting involved in such an enterprise undermining our national sovereignty, already laminated, long with the solidarity of all African countries with Haiti, long with the solidarity of people around the world with Haiti.